Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, uh, this is a three-way match. Um, this is going to be about new construction of non-interactive zero-knowledge proof systems. I'm going to present what is a common result in all three works, and then uh, Willie and Chuichi will present um, more specific results obtained in the other works. So a zero-knowledge proof, that's an interactive protocol between a prover and a verifier, where the prover tries to convince the verifiers that some statement is true. The protocol should be correct. It should also be sound, meaning that if the statement is incorrect, then no malicious prover should be able to convince the verifiers that the statement is true. And it should be zero knowledge, meaning that the verifier should not learn anything from the protocol other than the fact that the statement is true. A non-interactive zero knowledge proof that's a special kind of zero knowledge proof that consists of a single flow from the prover to the verifier. And in this work, we'll be interested in two uh, special forms of non-interactive zero knowledge proof. So in this first part, I will focus on something that's called designated verifier non-interactive zero knowledge proof, or DVNISIC in short. So in a DVNISIC, uh, the verifier is given a secret verification key. He can verify the proof sent by the prover using some secret information. Now here's something that's very important, is that the standard soundness notion, which states that the prover should not be able to prove an incorrect statement, does not suffice to adequately capture the security we want from such a system anymore, because it doesn't prevent the prover from learning information about the secret verification key of the verifier by receiving feedbacks on previous proof. So the right security notion for DVNISIC, and the one we will consider in all these works, is the notion of unbounded soundness, which states that it should not be feasible to forge a proof for an incorrect statement, even if you're given um, arbitrary polynomial access to a verification oracle that has a secret verification key hardcoded. Very brief history of NISIX and designated verifier NISIX. NISIX have been introduced in 1988, and in terms of assumption, we essentially know three main um, assumptions that imply NISIX. We can build NISIX from the factorization assumption, we can build NISIC from, um, um, from pairing-related assumptions, and very recently in the Brexit result, we learned that we can build NISICs from uh, the LW assumption. Without going into all the details, uh, for DV NISICs, um, actually all the early results are regarding the possibility of building these relaxed variants of NISICs, they had the issue that they only satisfy bounded soundness meaning that it was possible to completely break the soundness of the protocol uh, if the prover was given feedback on previous proofs by the verifier. So this is not really a realistic security uh, notion, and the desirable one is unbounded soundness, as I said. And although there has been some recent work on achieving those relaxed variants of NISICs with unbounded soundness, essentially the main takeoff is that uh, until our works, it was not known whether it's possible to build designated verifier NISICs with unbounded soundness, from assumptions which are not already known to imply standard NISICs. And so this is exactly the problem we solve in this work. We achieve designated refer NISICs from an assumption that's not known to imply standard NISICs. And we build the designated refer NISIC for all of NP from the standard computational D. Fielman assumption. There is a second result in our work that builds a new NISIC from LWE plus non-interactive witness indistinguishable proof for a bounded distance decoding language. But since that was recently subsumed by the wonderful result of Pi Kurt and Chehan, I will not uh, discuss it in this work, in this talk. So here is a roadmap. Um, our starting point is a work by Dwork and Naur that builds um, non-interactive zero knowledge proof starting from two main building blocks. The first one is a cryptographic building block. It's called verifiable pseudorandom generator. And the second one is an idealized model. It's, uh, um, and this is, this is the existence of non-interactive zero knowledge proof in the hidden bit model. So our uh, construction proceeds in two steps. First, we will relax this notion of verifiable pseudorandom generator that was invented by Dwork and Naur by relaxing the soundness notion of these VPRGs and generalizing them to the designated verifier setting. And we will show that this relaxation and generalization still allow for a construction of non-interactive or, uh, of NISIC or designated verifier NISIC using, in addition, NISICs in the hidden bit model. And at the same time, we will show that actually those uh, Verax VPRG are easier to build, and we will provide a construction of a uh, relaxed designated verifier PRG uh, from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. So let's go over NISICs in the hidden bit model. 
Here, um, this I that I show on this slide denotes what each of the parties sees. So our prover on top sees a long hidden bit string. So this is a truly random string that have been sampled honestly and that is somewhere in the sky. At the same time, the verifier does not see anything about this hidden uh, bit string, hence the name, hidden bit model. And so to design an ESIC in this model, what the prover is allowed to do is first to write some message, any message of its choice, and then to select a subset of the bit of the hidden bit string. Then the prover will send this message to the verifier and reveal uh, the location of the hidden bit string uh, indexed by this subset. And you can really think of it as turning up some cards that were face down. So you cannot, the, ver the prover cannot possibly cheat about that in this idealized model. So we know since the work of Feigl, Lapid, and Shamir in 1990 that non-interactive zero-knowledge proof for all of NP do exist unconditionally in this idealized model. The question is now how to transform a proof in this idealized model into a proof in the standard uh, common reference string model. Intuitively, the main tool that we need is something that will allow the, very, the prover to generate a long string that should uh, look random. That should also allow him to probably open some position of this string to the verifier in a verifiable way. And those opening should not leak any information about the values that the prover decided not to open. Well, as you can guess, this is exactly what a verifiable pseudorandom generator does. A VPRG has three algorithms. VPRG takes as input some seed and produces a long string of pseudorandom bits together with a value uh, that will bind the prover to the seed. You can think of it as being a commitment to the seed. Then there is a proving algorithm that essentially allows to show, uh, when you have the seed, that some uh, specific position of the hidden bit string corresponding to the committed seed uh, is equal to the right value. And the verification algorithm takes as input this commitment to the seed, takes as input the position of the hidden bit string, a proof, and uh, the and candidate bit, and outputs yes or no, indicating whether it accepts or rejects the proof. Among the properties we need for this, for this uh, primitive, we want the seed to be short. We want our pro the proofs that we do not to leak any information about the seed, except that the fact that some specific position of the hidden uh, of the um, um, pseudonym string is equal to the right value. And the proof should satisfy soundness in a very strong sense. And I insist that in the initial work of Dworkin now, soundness had to be a very strong notion of soundness. So Dworkin now required that every possible uh, commitment to the seed, even maliciously formed, has to be in the image of the VPRG. That for every possible, even maliciously formed commitment to the seed, there has to be a unique associated um, pseudorandom string. And that proof of opening to incorrect bits should not exist. So our starting point is relaxing this strong soundness notion. First, we entirely drop the first requirement. We don't require the commitment to the seed uh, to be um, all uh, correctly formed. They can be maliciously formed and not be in the image of the VPRG. Then, uh, instead of asking incorrect proof not to exist, we only require that proofs for an incorrect statement are hard to find. And this is crucial because in the designated verifier setting, it's always possible for the prover to cheat by guessing the secret key. He can use the secret key, the secret verification key, to forge proofs. So proofs for an incorrect statement do always exist. We can only hope to guarantee that they are hard to find. And then if we only had those requirements, then that would be a trivial primitive. It will be satisfied by something that just takes a PRG, stretches it to a pseudorandom string, and commit to the output bit by bit. And that will be the commitment to the seed. So we add just a minimal additional requirement to make this non-trivial, which is that the commitment to the sheet should be short, much shorter, much shorter than the long pseudorandom string. With this, we can actually build now an ESIC for all of NP. The idea is as follows. The prover will pick a seed, generate a long pseudorandom string, and XOR it with the common reference string, which is just a long random string. And it will think of this, long, uh, of this XOR of two string as being his string in the hidden bit model, and in his head, he will run the proof in the hidden bit model, obtaining a message and a subset of positions to open. Then the prover sends to the verifier uh, the commitment to the seed that he used, uh, the message uh, for the proof in the hidden bit model, uh, the subset of the position he wants to open, together with the value he wants to open them to, and proves that he's not lying about the op uh, openings to those positions. Why is that secure? 
Intuitively, that's because in the hidden bit model, our NASIC is unconditionally sound, meaning that with sufficient parallel repetition, we can ensure that only a tiny negligible fraction of all possible hidden bit string, uh, for only a tiny negligible fra fraction of all possible hidden bit string, uh, there exist proofs for incorrect statement. So what we look at is all possible CRS, and we say that the CRS is close to being a bad string if there exists a commitment to the seed, such that if you take the, uh, the pseudorandom string associated to this commitment, and you XR that with the uh, common reference string, you obtain a hidden bit string for which a bad proof exists. But since uh, the commitments are short, and since we can make uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the fraction of bad hidden bit string as small as we like, by a union bound, we can ensure that with overwhelming probability over the choice of the common reference string, it will not be close enough to a bad string for the prover to be able to find a short commitment to the seed that will allow him to create a bad hidden bit string. So then the hidden bit string will have to be correct, and the prover cannot cheat about the uh, message and the subset. So he has to find incorrect proofs for the opening if he wants to cheat. But by finding such incorrect proofs, he will break the third property uh, of our uh, relaxed soundness notion, um, which uh, contradicts the security notion of our VPRG. And that essentially concludes the proof of the soundness, uh, the proof of the zero knowledge part essentially reduces to the fact that the VPRG uh, does not leak any information about the non open position. Uh, the main instantiation that we have um, is from the computational DF element assumption. So the idea is uh, quite simple. Uh, CDH states that given G, G to the A, G to the B, it should be hard to build G to the AB. Actually, uh, we will use two uh, well known results. First, it's known that, it's a result by uh, Cash Kills Shoup uh, in 2008, that if you're given G, G to the A, G to the B, and G to the C, it is hard to build G to the AB and G to the AC, even if you're given a specific checking uh, key that allows you to check the corresponding decisional problem, like checking given G to the AB and G to the AC, that they satisfy the corresponding decisional relation with G, G to the A, G to the B, and G to the C. So essentially, uh, what has been shown in this paper is that the CDH problem, the standard one, is equivalent to this gap twin CDH problem. So um, we will use a second much well-known result, I mean, extremely well-known result, which is the, the goldreich levin CRM, which is that um, we can't find a hardcore bit for any computational problem, so we will denote B this hardcore bit. So the problem we we'll rely on is the fact that it should be hard to find this bit, B of G to the A, B, G to the A, C, even given G, G to the A, G to the B, G to the C, and a secret key that allows us to check the decisional relation between G to the A, B, G to the A, C, and the previous values. And this can be proven to be equivalent to CDH. Now, in our construction, intuitively, this G to the A here will be our commitment to the seed. A will be the seed. And we will think of G to the B and G to the C as being public parameters. We will have many of them, as many as the size of the uh, hidden bit string we want to produce. And now this uh, bit B will correspond to the pseudorandom bit associated to the commitment to the C with respect to those public parameters. So how do you uh, open... Uh, so the fact that this is pseudorandom, that it cannot be found, that reduces easily to the uh, computational Diffie-Hellman assumption by the argument I just gave. And how do you open a position of the string? So you simply reveal G to the AB, G to the AC. Then the verifier can check that if you take the outcore bit, you obtain the right bit. And at the same time, he can use his uh, twin decisional Diffie-Hellman checking key to check that you've not lied by sending G to the AB and G to the AC, and that satisfies the correct decisional relation. So that gives essentially uh, the construction we like, uh, we want. Uh, we will switch to the NEL talk if you have any question first. Yes, 